I, um, I want you to know how humbled and how honored I am to be with you here today. God is in this place. This is my fifth time back to Australia and it's my first day on a 34 day literally around the world in 13 nations over the next 34 days and I just thought I'd start with the best right here just on the first day. Exodus chapter 3. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the desert. And he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So he thought, I'll go over and see this strange sight. Why does the bush not burn up? When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called him from within the bush. Moses, Moses, and Moses said, here am I. Now you know this story. God says, Moses, take off your shoes. This is holy ground. And so he takes off his shoes. And then God asked Moses one of the most important questions in life. He says, what is in your hand? You may not realize this, but that is the second most important question in life. The first one is, what have you done with my son, Jesus Christ? I hope you know the answer to that one. But once you've settled the issue of salvation, you have to settle the issue of stewardship. What is in your hand? These are the two great themes of the Bible. Salvation and stewardship. What you think you own is really on loan. It wasn't yours before you were born. It's not going to be yours after you die. You just get to use it while you're here on earth for a few years. And God asked Moses, what is in your hand? Now let me tell you a little secret. Whenever God asks you a question, it's never for his benefit. It's not like God doesn't know what's in his hand. He knows what's in his hand. He wants Moses to know what's in his hand. So when God asks you that question, he's saying, do you know what I've put in your hand? And Moses replies, Lord, it's a staff. It was a shepherd's staff. You know one of those sticks with a crook on the end of it? He says, it's, it's a staff, Lord. And God says, throw it down. He throws it down, and it becomes what? Yeah, a snake, a serpent. It comes alive. Something that has been dead all of a sudden comes alive. Something that was simply a piece of stick. It's just dead wood. All of a sudden, it's a living organism. It's alive. It becomes a snake, a serpent. And God says, pick it up. So Charlton Heston leans over. <laughs> oh, you saw it. And he picks it up, and it becomes what? A stick. A stick again. Now what is that all about? Throw it down, it becomes a serpent. Pick it up, it becomes a stick. What is that all about? Well, let me tell you another little tip. God never does a miracle just to show off. There's always a reason for it. There's always a purpose for it. There's always a lesson behind it. Every miracle is a parable of truth. Every parable is a miracle of truth. 
And God's saying, Moses, I've got something I want to teach you about what you've got in your hand. What's in your hand? It's the staff. Throw it down, it comes alive. Pick it up, it dies again. What was God trying to teach Moses? Moses' staff represented three things in his life. Number one, it represented his identity. It represented who he was. Moses was a shepherd. He'd already spent 40 years in Pharaoh's court learning to be a somebody. Now he's spending 40 years in Midian learning to be a nobody. So then he could spend the last 40 of years learning to be God somebody. And the staff represented who he was. Moses was a shepherd. It was the symbol of his job, of his identity. I am a shepherd. Second, it was not only a symbol of his identity, it was a symbol of his income. Because all of his assets were tied up in his flocks. In those days, nobody had portfolios, stock accounts, mutual funds, bank savings. There weren't even such things as banks in those days. All of his wealth was tied up in his flock of sheep. You could look at it and you could see how wealthy he was or how not wealthy a person was. His assets were in his flocks. That's why in the book of Proverbs, the Bible tells us, know well the condition of your flocks. He's talking about keeping good business records. Today he'd say, know well the condition of your stocks. But it represented not only his identity, I am a shepherd, it represented his income, his wealth. The third thing it represented is it represented his influence. His influence. Because what do you use a shepherd's staff for? You use it to move sheep from point A to point B. That's how you move them. You influence them with a staff. You either pull them or you poke them, you know, by hook or by crook. And he would move his sheep from here to here. That's what you use a staff for. It represented his influence. And so when God says, Moses, what's in your hand? He's saying, I want you to recognize your identity, who you are, your income, what you have, and your influence, what you're doing with it. A year ago, I spoke at the National Basketball Association All-Stars game in, in America. Because most of the basketball teams in America had done 40 days of purpose. So they invited me to come and speak to the, to the teams and to the All-Stars. When I was with them, I said, what is in your hand? And I said to them, it's a basketball. And that basketball represents the same three things that the staff did in Moses' life. It's your identity, you're a basketball player. It's your income, you make your living playing basketball. And it's your influence. The rest of your life, you'll be a, a basketball player. You won't play all your life, you only play for five or six years, but the rest of your life. The reason I know this is my brother played American football, actually was on a football team, wasn't, didn't play it, with the 49ers, and my brother has four Super Bowl rings. It's been 20 years since he's been with the 49ers, but he still wears the Super Bowl rings. Now let me ask you a question. What is in your hand? What is in your hand? What has God put in your life? The world is yet to see what God can do through one person who is totally, completely, second by second, sold out to Jesus Christ. Why don't you be that person? Why not you? Not the person next to you, why not you? What is in your hand? Let me say it another way. What are you doing with what you've been given? Now the Bible teaches over and over through the parables 